All right, now I'm very happy to welcome back one of the most experienced handicappers in the industry, and Mr. Tony George from Doc Sports. You can follow Tony at T George Sports on Twitter. Tony, man, I cannot believe we are in week eight. That's like over halfway through the college football regular season. How does it happen this fast, man? I just look, I'm like, what, week eight? What? Almost all week? Man, it was just like yesterday. I saw you at, at uh, contest weekend at Circa, and we were up at the Legacy Club tearing it up and just celebrating the fact that college football was uh, kicking in and and uh, Georgia Tech had, had uh, beaten Florida State outright. We are excited about that and yeah. all this, that, and the other. And we did your show down there on Radio Row, and it, that was like it was like last weekend. <laughs> and and here, here we are in, in week eight, and uh, – the the plot is beginning to thicken in college football and the NFL too, you know. And hell, we're talking about we're we're in the NL and ALCS and baseball and we're and hockey season has started. And the NBA starts the twenty third. I mean, it's it's in college basketball's knocking on the door. It's just crazy how quick it happens. Well, I know. I got you know this weekend. I circled to try to sneak and find some time to cap college basketball, man. Yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, 18 days, and it's going to be here. It's yeah. Like, we got to be prepared, you know. And it, it, I say it every year, of course. You know, it always happens, you know, mid-October, and I'm like, geez, always feeling behind. But uh, I'm hoping to kind of dig into that. But we're busy people, Tony. That's yeah. for sure. And yeah. we have a lot going on uh, this weekend. Uh, lots of NFL, lots of college football. But, man, you know, I, I, I want to ask you, because I have some thoughts on this, which conference now do you think, or has it been changed, is right now the best in college football? Oh, I think it's between the SEC and the Big Big Ten. I'd, I'd lean Big Ten just because, of, you know, the teams that are in there that are, are still competing, uh, uh, the SEC, you know, that – it, that's going to kind of shake itself. A little bit of the Big Ten shook itself out last week, Re, I guess, because Oregon got the win over Ohio State, but it was, you know, toss-up between the two of them. You didn't see much drop in the rankings after that one. And, of course, now you got Tennessee and Alabama, you know, this weekend to kind of shake that up a little bit there. Um, Georgia, Texas, there's another big deciding factor. So, a lot of these are going to shake themselves out. I probably give a little bit more of a lean to the SEC. I think they're just a little bit more top heavy good than what the Big Ten is. But you know, I think Texas is a team to beat this year. Um, I think Georgia's a little bit. We're going to find out, you know, Saturday for sure about Georgia. They've already got one loss under their belt, and they damn near uh, Kentucky. If Kentucky can score a touchdown, they can beat them. You know, and that, I mean, so, you know, I, I don't, maybe we'll find out that Texas is far superior. I mean, they put, you know, that Red River War usually is a pretty good ball oh. game. They just put, they, they put Oklahoma over their knee and just pulled out a can of whoop ass on them. And I mean, they, the, you could even say they throttled back a little bit. I mean, it could have got, it could have been uglier. And, and I guess I'm asking myself too, if you're Oklahoma, so you're an elite program. You're a blue blood program. You're an elite program. If you're Oklahoma and we have all this recruiting and this portal open, how the hell do you not have a quarterback? Hmm. I mean, uh, uh, granted, they were beat up at wide receiver. They have been for the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, uh, in the games they played. Um, I'm not so sure Venables is a great head coach. I think he's a great coordinator. There's a little bit of that at play there. His inexperience is showing up a little bit. But how do you not get up and compete in the Red River War? I mean, I don't care if, you know, I've always yeah. said, it's one of those games you throw out the record books, you know. And it you could, I it, back when Oklahoma played Nebraska, of course, they were always good on all those Switzer and Osborne years. But at the end of the day, even if a team was shitty, you know, uh, when that when that game came around, it was you know it's bare knuckles. It's like a street fight, you know. And I, so I found I, I I was a little surprised though that they don't have a quarterback in house. But I, I at the end of the day, I think the SEC's the conference. I still think 
Although, and, you know, let's not discount Texas A&M and their prowess in that conference, you know. I mean, they're ju- they just got a lot of really good – Missouri's a good football team, despite Texas A&M stomping them. They're a good football team. Hell, Vandy's knocked off too big. I mean, they got a lot of – apparently, they also have a lot of parity. You know, Ole Miss, LSU, I mean, go down the, go down the list. I mean, uh, all those teams that are in contention there, the top eight teams in the SEC – I'll, I'll goddamn well guarantee you one thing. They're in any team in any other conference that wants to play any of them. No, absolutely not. I, uh, I, I, I flip to Big Ten as the better one right now, and it's by a little bit. Don't get me wrong. And people can say, well, the SEC just beats each other up. It doesn't mean they're not better. Like, I will right. say that. I will say that the lower part of the SEC is better than the lower part of the Big Ten. Oh, yeah. You know, just because, I mean, there's some pretty bad teams in Northwestern and Maryland. And, you know, um, I, I mean, it's weird to say Mississippi State's the worst team. But then you got Georgia at home against Mississippi State that beats them by 10 freaking points. 34-point yeah. favorite. You know, you got, you got Alabama getting beat by Vanderbilt, of course. And actually, we had Vanderbilt in that game. But, we, you know, it's it, it, it the next week you just think, well, Bam was going to, you know, figure it out and take care of South Carolina. That could pretty really do that that well. You know, that was a nail biter, tooth and nail at the end. And, and then you got Texas whipping, like you said, no, no quarterback. And you let Dylan Gabriel walk. If you're the SEC, how do you let Dylan Gabriel walk to the Big Ten? I think that's your answer. You, yeah. the, the quarterback left for the Big Ten, and yeah. Oregon's got money. Don't get me wrong, but so does Oklahoma. Yeah. I, I, and then you got this, you know, tooth and nail game between Oregon and Ohio State, which was fine. You know, I mean, that, that you can't really downgrade Ohio State much from that. You, if anything, you upgrade Oregon. So I think as a whole, when you got some teams like Indiana showing up and Nebraska's pretty good and, um, you know, Wisconsin all of a sudden figured it out the last couple of weeks. Iowa's Iowa, you know, they're boring, but, you know, their offense is better than it was last year. Uh, you give the nod to the Big Ten, and I know, obviously, you got the Georgia, the Texas, and the Alabama there that might, you know, tell you that it's something different. But I'm not impressed by Tennessee. Um, no. I'm not impressed by Alabama. I'm not impressed by Ole Miss and what happens no. to them as well. So it, it's, I think, it just yeah, it's close. Uh, but this week will tell us more. So I, I, that's the way I feel. Well, yeah. Well, plus you know we throw in our two alma maters. I mean, we're sporting the gear right here, right, right there, and. Uh, you got that ugly W on there, the Badgers and the Huskers. I mean, you know, when when you're talking middle of the pack and you got two two powerhouses like that, how could you possibly go wrong and say the Big Ten isn't the best? I, just, I totally. think I, I think top to bottom though, and I'm speaking bottom. Uh, the SEC's better uh, yeah. when, when you if you get to the lower half of the conference. You know, I think that uh, you know, I mean. I just, I just think that uh, the SEC is better, but you know, and I hate to say that because I'm a, well, I'm a, actually a Big Twelve. I'm a Husker. Like, well, I'm Purdue a, ruined it for you've us. You've been Purdue a Big Ten fan your whole life. I still wish Nebraska was in the Big Twelve. I, I, you know, it's hard for us to get up for teams like Wisconsin, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, we we're we're trying, but um, nonetheless, <laughs> uh, and I know you want to talk about that game this weekend that the Huskers got coming off the bye, that's going to be a good one for oh, sure. we'll get to that. We'll get to and, that. And, and that's uh, huge. That there, but I, I think that I, I'm more interested – I'm interested from a fan perspective uh, about where Nebraska's at, uh, but I, I'm much more interested in how the elite do in the SEC this week. I think that Bama-Tennessee and that Texas-Georgia game are – are they're probably going to decide a lot of the national title picture, you know, very easily, you know, one of those teams could lo- either one of the teams that lose those games, in those two sec battles could still end up in the top 12 in the playoffs. So, oh. you know, you're going to see them again. So, you know, it's not the end of the world like it used to be for them. So um, that takes a little bit of the pressure off. Maybe teams play a little looser and, and, uh, you know, you get it, but at least we're going to get a good barometer. Well, Notre Dame's got a better chance of getting in if they beat each other up and a couple other teams. Yeah. Clemson's probably in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I don't think Louisville will, but Miami's in. Um, Do you think it, that love affair with Clemson 
is is warranted a 21 and a half point favorite over Virginia? No, I mean, no, th- their, line, no, no. their line keeps I, 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 I plan on taking Virginia at some point, obviously, yeah. get out of the bag right there. Uh, yeah. but no, no, I don't. I think Virginia's Virginia's been covered for me, they covered last week, they should have won outright against, the yeah, Eagle. they should have, but by Clemson, just by attrition in the Big Ten and in the SEC, will probably sneak in because they'll you know lose to Miami in the uh championship and there's really nobody else that can challenge them right uh, you, know, you know so that's that's my feeling on that um obviously power ratings we'll see where it all is said and done but i will say clemson's playing a hell of a lot better so is virginia though uh this season but let's move right into overrated underrated then tony uh i always like to ask with your respect to the market who you think is overrated uh and then who do you think is underrated why don't you start with overrated well you know it it's all subjective. Um, I think the team that's going to win the Big Big Twelve this year is still a little bit. Uh, they're being talked about, but they're still underrated. And that's BYU. I think BYU is going to win the Big Twelve this year. Uh, they got a they got a game against Oklahoma State where they're avenging a, a loss last year in overtime. Uh, and I like a team with revenge is playing on a strong home field, and we all know. Playing up there in the altitude at BYU is just insane. And then you take a look at their schedule left. They got two road games at Central Florida, who just got beat by Cincy, and uh, at Utah, which isn't all that. Cam Rising looked like a dog turned to cantaloupe patch last week. He's done. Yeah. Yeah, he's done. And then they got the remaining games, Kansas, Arizona State, and Houston, all at home. This is going to be an unbeaten team. This could be, they're not going to lose to Oklahoma. I don't give a, I don't give a rat's ass. If Oklahoma State had a bye week. They don't even know who they're. They're not even announcing their starting quarterback till tomorrow. Gundy wow. isn't. I mean, they got problems offensively. Their Bowman's not the answer, and um, BYU is going to take care of business there. You know the the numbers manageable. Kansas is is not what they were the last couple of years. Uh, Arizona State's going to be beat up by the time they play them, and they're a middle of the road team. And then we all know Houston, although they beat TCU, and I don't know how, Houston's still a bad football team and struggle offensively. And bear in mind, they got three points to the good with all those games Oklahoma State, Kansas, Arizona State, and Houston, because they got that home field advantage. That home field advantage up there is worth the full three points. BYU only plus 350, like you said, to make the playoffs. Yeah. Look, there's a long shot. You wanted to talk about long shot bets at at the end of the show. There's a long shot. Who's going to beat them? Well, I think you you are. They're good. Well, here's the problem if they run the table and lose their championship game, they're still in. I mean, once you say that, the Big 12 is looked at as good enough to have the undefeated regular season team. They got to beat Oklahoma State. They got to go to UCF. They should beat Utah now. Kansas at home at ASU and leave it out this game. I, I'm guessing they'll come back, but you never know. So that's a little bit of a tough spot at ASU. But then Houston at home, they they will be in if they run the table, even if they lose to Kansas State, which I think is going to be the next team or Iowa State. What's funny is they don't play Iowa State this year. Yeah, they never beat Kansas State, so they yeah. have a really that I like that play. Let's 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 table that one for uh for later. Um, yeah, I, and, then, I think, and the over and overrated. I'm just going to give you one. I still think they shouldn't be in the top 25, and they're not going to be probably after this weekend. That's Michigan. I think Michigan. I took them heavy, heavy, heavy futures bet on their season win totals under. I yeah. mean heavy. This this two dimes. And you know they got two losses already. They got Illinois this weekend. That's a toss-up football game. Illinois is a good football team. Um, uh, they didn't look good last last week, but they got it done. They were looking ahead, but then you know they still got so their remaining schedule: Illinois, Oregon, Indiana, Ohio State, and they're already at four and two. Yeah, um, I'm just telling you, they could easily end up, you know, five and. Five. I'm, this, I'm, I'm telling you, I thought they might win six games. They might win six games. I thought that at the beginning of the year, I went light. I was on Visa with Matt Eumann saying that. You know, no, at the I, beginning I of the disagree. year for the future show, you you were in Vegas that weekend, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, 
and you were hanging out the bar waiting for me to get done so I could buy you a drink. But anyway, <laughs> at, <laughs> at, at the end of the day, yeah, I think Michigan's way overrated. They shouldn't be in there. Um, they played two really good teams, Texas and Washington, and got beat soundly in both of them. All right. No, um, I, I agree. I agree with you. I, I have Michigan as still overrated as well. Yeah. In my power ratings, God, where do I have them in my power ratings? I don't. I, I might be edging the top 25 with them, but it's not like anything too high. And I got, it at 30, I got it at 37 in mind. Oh, wow. And to give you, give you an indication, I got Illinois. At, I got Illinois at 30. I have Michigan at 25, right in yeah. the dot. at 20. Oh, no, 26. I got a BYU at him. I forgot I made an adjustment last week. Uh, nope, 26. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we both say they're overrated. I'm going to give you one. That's underrated, and that's Louisiana Monroe. Um, kind yeah, of they're under. The, they're playing very good. Their uh, ATS is really good, five and one ATS, but their ATS margins third best in the nation, third or fourth best in the nation, something like that. They're plus thirteen point eight ATS margin, and uh, they're playing defense. I mean, when they beat James Madison, and then in their letdown spot against Southern Miss, they blew them out. You know that they're pretty serious this year. Yeah. Now, now they have a bye week this week, so I can't beat on them right now. But I'm going to be curious what the number is at South Alabama next week. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this could be a play on the on the road, a possible small favorite. They'll probably give them a small favorite, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm looking at Louisiana Monroe as underrated. And then overrated, I unfortunately had to switch because this team was underrated for a while. But I'm going to Army overrated because I think that Army hasn't played anybody. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that, that, that's surprising that, you know, that's surprising to me. I, I've i got them rated a little higher. I mean, I'm not – I think they're – I think they're, I, I think they're um, a, a good team, but you know, I don't think they're an elite team. I wanted before you jumped army. I always wanted to say something when you talk about that Lamite, Louisiana Monroe defense. Uh, did you watch South Alabama last night? Troy was getting I, to, Troy was getting to their quarterback like a hot knife on butter. What's Louisiana Monroe going to do to them? They're going to get them, and that's yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And I only watched yeah. some of that game. Baseball is on. My son's baseball game happened at seven thirty p.m. last night. He went two for one with a double. So. Uh, knocked in some runs, so I was happy about that. Um, no, no, if you're playing in the majors, that'll make you that'll make you ten million a year. <laughs> yeah, that sure would. <laughs> That's a long way to go, man. Uh, ten year old baseball, but uh, no, it's uh, it, it's true. Uh, I just think that that's a great spot to do that. And uh, Army, going back to Army, I mean, here's who the Army Black Knights play. Um, and I was liking them. Don't get me wrong, but Lehigh at Florida Atlantic, and then Rice. Yeah, at, Tem at Temple, who's like the worst, one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah. At, Tulsa, at Tulsa, who's now proven to be the worst team. What a disappointment for Tulsa! Jesus, they're terrible. And yeah. then, uh, and then UAB. I, I oh. you know, there is no surprises here. And now they have a, a East Carolina who might have a run defense this week. We'll see. We'll see. I just think Army is a little bit uh, overrated now. That was underrated. Speaking of UAB, Trent Dilfer is a worse a worse head coach than he was a sports broadcaster. That's amazing. That's hard to do. <laughs> That's true, man. I I, uh, I was never high on Trent Dilfer over at ESPN. I had to listen to him, and yeah, obviously I don't watch nearly as much because I just get so much more information now the way I do things. But um, yeah, that was painful having to watch that, man. But hey, we got college football to talk about, man. It's a massive slate this weekend, so let's get started. Uh, the first one on the docket is Baylor versus Texas Tech. Texas Tech's minus 6.5 total is 55.5. So this one is interesting. Um, I'm not – well, I'll just let you know my, my thoughts here. I'm not looking at a side. Um, this is kind of an under-the-radar game because these guys are somewhat rivals here sitting in Texas. You know, they're kind of sure. the, 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 the forgotten child. You know, it's not like the Longhorns. It's not A&M. You know, it's it, they're 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 kind of like in the now you, maybe even lower than the TCU realm as far as thought about. But Baylor um, it, it is a very disappointing team. They 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 tend to puke all over themselves. Uh, I, I'm really close on the side. I got I got this as a five point seven five point game. So I guess we're out at six. But I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the total. Bay, Baylor's has not been great on offense, but they're at least positive. 
0.45 net yards per play. But look at the defenses they played. They played Utah's defense. They played BYU's defense. And they played Iowa State's defense. Uh, you know, if you just threw in Kansas State, that was that's the best of the Big 12 right there. I think their offense will be improved because they're coming off the bye week. So I think there's improvement there. They don't have a lot of injuries. Texas Tech also coming off the bye week, right? Uh, nice showing in Arizona, putting up 20. Yeah, I had them as a big Arizona. premium play. Me too. Me too. And, and the Red Raiders have a solid offense, ranking 34th in EPA and 40th in yards per play on offense. But their defense is rough. They rank 109th in yards per play, and 89th in opponent EPA on defense. So you know what I'm looking at, the over, but there's a problem right now that I'm waiting out. Um, this team plays, both these teams, 14th and 15th in seconds per play in the nation. So they're they're top 15, both of them, in speed, right? So their pace yeah. is great for an over. The problem is that the weather's kind of looking crappy at Lubbock. It's very gusty. Uh, now, it's always windy in Lubbock. Look, yeah. You know that, right? It's always yeah. windy there. And Texas Tech's offense kind of gets around it with a short pass. So I'm, I'm okay with that, but it might rain too. I, I, the, the rain, I still would like it. But I think it goes lower because of that weather. And as soon as I get a decent report that I know it's not going to be a freaking monsoon, right, then I'll fire on this over. It's down to 55 and a half. I know I said 56, but I'm looking around as 55 and a half, 55 in most books. So this is just a uh, sneaky one I'm waiting on there, Tony. Yeah, if you take a look at Baylor's defense, I was looking at this total – uh, for a premium play, I saw the weather as well. But, boy, they gave up 43 to Iowa State, 34 to BYU, 38 to Colorado, all losses. And then they gave up 23 at Utah, and that's without Cam Rising. They, the two games they played any defense against, they held Tarleton State to three and Air Force, who's horrible, to three. And the rest of it, they just gave it up like a mofo. <laughs> you know, and I just like, you know, I I like that over, but I didn't see that weather. But at Texas Tech, we know they can put up some points, man. That They get it up and down the field. They, they got a lot of playmakers there. Um, I think Texas Tech, I don't care. You know, I thought maybe Baylor, the, the game to take them in was against Iowa because they always play Iowa tough. It's just a, always a knockdown, drag out Iowa game. State. Iowa yeah, State. Iowa State. I mean, yeah, Iowa State, and I and I and at the first, at the end of the first half, I wasn't surprised. A damn near tie ball game, and then Iowa State just absolutely destroyed them in the second half. Their defense couldn't hold up. Their defense ain't going to hold up here. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, even with with windy weather, this, that, and the other. Because Texas Tech does a lot of dink and dunk, they'll have to adjust their game plan for stretching the field vertically deep. But they got enough guys, scat backs and stuff running around there. I wouldn't be surprised to see them have 38 points in this, 35, 38 points in this game. Just depends on what Baylor can do offensively. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not surprised. It's going to be hard to get to 55 and a half. I would not, I would not be surprised, 100%. Well, so we got some agreement there. Let's move on to New Mexico versus Utah State. Utah State plus two, uh, total 78. Now, you picked this one with the biggest total of the year, Tony, in college football. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say about this. Well, I, I tell you what, right now, New Mexico is going to roll them. Um, I, I had New Mexico last uh, their last game against Air Force as a premium play. Uh, they blew them out of the water. Uh, the, of course, that's not saying much, but you know, I, I mean, Temple. I, I'm and I'm recalling this off the, back, the top of my head here. I'm not looking at a stat. Temple hung 38 on them, dude. I mean, when Temple hangs 38 on your defense, and you have given up. I actually I made a note of this because I knew I was going to do this show. Utah State has allowed 50, 62, 46, 38, and 48 points in their last five games. And one of those teams was Temple, who beat them by 16. Now, I, you know, I, I know that New Mexico is nothing to brag about, and their defense is, is uh, poor, but they're number 24 in college football in scoring. And they run for 208 yards a game, which is number 23 
in college football, Kev. And I'm telling you right now, it it's going to be back and forth game because New Mexico's defense sucks. Although they did a nice job against uh, Air Force, but uh, this line is one and a half to two and a half, depending on where you're looking. The money line, I bet this at minus one twenty earlier this week, you know, and took the point, took the two points out of it, the point and a half at the time. But uh, I think they get if New Mexico doesn't beat them by seven points, and I know they put up a, they looked a little chipper in the second half against UNLV when UNLV just took their foot off the throttle when they were just absolutely pummeling them doing whatever they wanted to do in the first half and we've seen that happen a couple of times this year with some teams that just they take their foot off the throttle and you can't do that in college football anymore but if New Mexico doesn't beat them by a touchdown they need to shut down their program on on Sunday they <laughs> fire the coach and shut down the program well, Utah State should be shutting down your program because how do you lose yeah, yeah. by double digits to freaking Temple? God, no, that's God. that's right there is all you need to know. Oh my that's, God, it, that's all you that's, need to know. That's just awful. Uh, yeah, New Mexico would be the only side for me in this situation. They improved a little bit. It's not like they're that great of a team. Yeah, they did fight that first week. Um, they put up some points against Arizona and Auburn, at least. You know, they put up 19 here, 39 against Arizona. Fresno State, they put up 20. You know, they're scrappy. They're, they should have enough to take care of Utah State. So you don't have a, uh, no disagreement from me on that one. Um, I'll, I'll, let me just see what my number is exactly on this one. It has to be um, New Mexico. You know, it's funny. My new, my number is New Mexico minus one and a half. So I'm close yeah, to That's what spread. the line was. Yeah, I'm, I'm right on the line, but I'd still go to Mexico before anything else. It's just you wonder if this is just the last railing cry for Utah State where they can just try to do something shocking. But no, it's the, the chances are more that I think New Mexico takes care of business here. Let's move on to the next game. Uh, Nebraska versus Indiana, my man. The hat you are wearing, the shirt you are sporting, the team that you've lived and died with. Your whole yep. life. And this is yep. Nebraska is a six and a half point dog against Indiana. Totals 50.5. And I made my money off Indiana this year. And I I already hit their over five and a half win total. Thank you, Kirk Signetti. Fantastic stuff. But Tony, as much as the shit we talk back and forth, as, as much as I explain how the Badgers have beat you down year after year, roasting corn yep. and all that. Oh, I get the text every weekend. I like I, I I hate to say this, I I like Nebraska this this week and, and oh, wow. you know, in, in, Indiana is six and zero oh against the spread five and one ATS but Nebraska is four four and one four one and one ATS. It does not warrant Indiana being this big, big of a favorite. It's a different role for them against a power school. I like bye weeks, Tony, but I don't like bye weeks when you're undefeated and it kind of throws you off ribbon. Really, yeah. I, I think that's exactly. What you're seeing is going to happen here to Indiana. You know, they played also nobody, like literally nobody this year. At least Nebraska blew out a pretty scrappy Colorado team that we're seeing right now. Yep. They were neck and neck against Illinois, who, oh, by the way, is ranked. You know, yeah. Illinois is actually a much better team than people expected. And, uh, you know, Rutgers is actually better than any of the teams that Indiana beat. Indiana yeah. hasn't beaten anybody this year. You know, I, I mean, that's the big thing that I'm looking at is schedule, strength of schedule in this situation here. And Dylan Rayola, uh, he, he was a, a top recruit for a reason here. And, you know, I do love the fact that Indiana can throw the ball a little bit now with uh, Curtis Rourke, but Curtis Rourke, you just also have to remember, was a Mac guy. He was a, a group yeah, of five a quarterback. guy, ironically. Yeah, and, and so we're going to give him this much credit for beating Northwestern, a terrible yeah. Maryland team. By the way, I'm fading Maryland this week, too. Wink, wink. Charlotte yeah. at UCLA, who's awful. Western Illinois, Florida National. No. This, this is a disrespectful spread. My number is not even close to where this is. I'm closer to three points, actually. Um Couple other things. Uh, Nebraska has a, a good defense, and it's a better defense metrically. Tenth in EPA, over 18th for Indiana. So their defense gets the check mark. Defense travels, as we know. 
I mean, like I said, the Hoosiers have not been tested. I know Kirk Sinetti wins, and he's proven it at James Madison. But Matt Rule wins, too. If you don't believe me, just Google him. Take Nebraska plus six and a half. I'm going to owe you Case Omaha Steaks for putting that out. <laughs> let, let, me, let, let me say this, and I said this uh, uh, earlier this year on a show I did out in Vegas, and I'll Nebraska, you know, um, obviously, I, I'm not one of those guys that lives in the 90s that keeps bringing up the good old days because, it, you know, it, especially in the business that you and I are, I are in, the bottom line is, what have you done for me lately? And Nebraska right. has just sucked ass, you know, for quite some time since Bo Pelini left. And uh, even then with Pliny, we got to a Big Ten championship. I think Wisconsin hung like 70 on us in that thing. So, you know, at the end of the day, the one thing I have noticed over the past year and a half with Matt Rule being at the helm is something that didn't happen under Mike Riley and didn't happen under Scott Frost that happened <laughs> under Matt Rule, and he's done it everywhere he's been, and that's player development. Right. He's been able to get good players in there and develop them and um, bring some more discipline and reestablish that Nebraska culture. And the Nebraska culture is different than anywhere else in the country. It's a lot like your, your, your alma mater, Wisconsin. You know, uh, Barry Alvarez molded that program after Nebraska because he played football at Nebraska. Matter of fact, he was a lineman when Frank Solich was a fullback at Nebraska. Uh, under Bob Devaney as head coach. That's, that's you know, so they have that, and a lot of that mentality of like Wisconsin and Nebraska, two Midwestern corn-fed beefy guys up front, let's, let's play good defense and run the football type schools is, you know, is that they buy into the program 100%. They're all in. He hardly lost any guys in the portal. He brought in Rayola, who – was a Georgia recruit, was, was a five-star recruit, number two ranked quarterback in the country, all-around quarterback. Number one, his dad was a Nebraska legend. His, his uh, uncle is uh, a, a uh, offensive line coach there. But uh, this year, Nebraska is going to go to a bowl game, and I'm happy with that. I don't have any aspirations of a Big Ten title game. But <laughs> one thing I did, Nebraska's got five wins this year. And in all five of those wins, they held their opponents to ten points or less. All right, well, you just you you just you just curb your chirping after this win, then at Indiana. Yeah, so. because well, that's, <laughs> well, that, that's going to be that that that's going to be that's the thing that scares me because you're not going to hold Indiana, regardless of who they played, to ten points or less. But you got a lot of of James Madison boys in here that haven't faced a big physical team like Nebraska. Nebraska has a very good defense. Uh, they're, they're top 25 in a lot of metrics in the in college football. And the other thing, too, with this game, I think it's going to keep it close, is both these teams rank in the top 10 in college football in time of possession. You know, and so you're going to see a lot of fundamentally sound football and clock-eating style of play. Uh, even when they throw the ball, they keep it between the hash marks. And uh, I, I would be surprised to see it exceed 50 and a half points, actually. Boy, I, that's, I hope that's why you love I, I, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I'll take a cover. I would be if, – if we get a win, you're going to have to turn off your phone because I'm going to blow I will. it up, dude. I, I will. I'll but then, then, I'll, then, I'll, then I'll have to remind you it's Indiana, but okay. Well, especially, uh, after, we'll, we'll... especially after <laughs> – Especially after Northwestern hands you your ass this week. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> I, that thing got a little too high. We don't need to get into that game, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a little too high there. Uh, Oklahoma State BYU, speaking about yeah. trenches and good defense, BYU is minus nine and a half, total 53. You know, if you told me before the season that BYU is minus nine and a half, I'd be breaking windows down to try to uh, bet on Oklahoma yeah. State. But wow, it is warranted that they're definitely a favorite. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, oh, I like BYU. Uh, I, and I also would uh, you get them around five on the first half line, which is the way I bet it. Um, I don't like laying nine and a half, but uh, Oklahoma State has been a slow starter all year. Um, um, and they just, they're just not a good football team. Um, they have uh, 
Bowman is not getting it done. A quarterback, their offense does not work. Um, they just and they're giving it up on defense. They're just this is. I thought I thought last year Mike Gundy did one of the best coaching jobs of his entire career because Oklahoma State was left for dead on the side of the road like old Shep in 2023, and they you know they contended for a division title. Um, this year I thought going in they might be good. Uh, but they just, they haven't been able to get their running back. They're all, all world running back going. The quarterback play has been absolutely terrible. I can name 10 other teams in the Big 12 right now that have better quarterback play than Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, and BYU is a fundamentally sound football team with a very strong home field, and they're avenging a loss. And I like them in this game. I like them to beat them by 14 points. Two touchdown win right here. All right, do you like BYU? But I'd, the, but I'd lay the first half line. BYU first half, we'll call it. Yeah, minus four Less and than a half. Touchdown. Uh, if so you, I, 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 yeah, I could see BYU at least a touchdown to ten points up at halftime, and then Gundy's going to go to the bench for quarterback change too. He's our, I mean, he's already hinted to that in the media. That's how much confidence he has in his offensive game plan. We're all three quarterbacks in my my depth chart are getting snaps at practice, and we're going to go ahead and announce the starter for the game on Thursday. I'm torn on this game, Tony. Um, I have Oklahoma State as the play from a power rating standpoint, but the, my metrical algorithm says BYU beats them by 20. Yeah. You know, and so it's like, what's more real, what's not? I, I just obviously – the metrics still don't perfectly factor in strength of schedule. So I lean more to my power rings in college until week nine, 10, at least it's week eight, but you know, well, uh, at, you know, at, here's some, at some point in time, and I'm just going to ask you this because you're looking at algorithms, saber metrics, all these different things. And, and we all look at them. We all have to use them. But when you get to week eight in the college football season, Kev, at some point in time, also, do you just sit back and give it the eye test? You know. Yeah. Well, the metrics I, actually the, the algorithm yeah. agrees with the eye test on this one, so I do see yeah. the eye test. Well, here's the thing with Oklahoma State: yeah. what the hell is real? I mean, they were losing Arkansas. They should not have won that game. That was more no. of a joke to Arkansas. We find out that Tulsa is just terrible, so that went throw it out. South Dakota State. Yeah, I mean a frisky FCS team, but it's FCS team. I don't know how yeah. good they're doing now. And then they're blown. Then they lose to Utah at home by three. They lose to Kansas State by twenty-two. They lose to West Virginia at home by double digits, twenty-four. It's like what the hell is going on with this team? It's kind of yeah. like. It, but then you think Gundy is a dog coming off the bye. Yeah. That, that's that's the that's the part that's interesting. Um, God, it's a, it, it's probably a stay away for me. But like I said, the, the part of my handicap does agree with you, and so it, it wouldn't shock me to see uh, BYU blow him out. But Gundy can be strong. I, here's the thing, you know, he's got to get this these kids motivated again. You know yeah, what happened? Yeah. I mean, last year you're scoring uh, a lot more. Your defense is be- a little bit better last year. Um, you're beating teams when you need to. A little bit fraudulent last year, and this year it's just not getting done. Um, especially when you had three tomato cans like that. Um, yeah, how, it, and it, how do you motivate? How do you motivate your team? I mean, you're out of everything now. I yeah, mean, they're, they're they're done. Yeah, they're, they're toast, and they're just playing for dignity yeah, now. And, yeah, they're, and they're, I, they're, I just think, yeah, it's just hard to bend in that. I I don't. You're gonna go play Ball State in the pool and weed eater bowl. I mean, that's gonna be your goal. I mean, even make it. Yeah, if you get to six wins, so you know what? they they still got beat potatoes their schedule, you know going on here so and this and this is just tough road test i think it's he if if they were to beat byu by just and by the way anything's possible don't get me wrong i mean anything vandy beat alabama i mean anything is possible but at day's end you know if, if he was to beat byu by some chance i mean that would be the greatest coaching job he's ever done because i don't this team just from everything i've read locally um He's having a tough time getting just getting a hold of the team. Put it Miami, that way. Miami versus Louisville. Louisville plus four and a half, total wow. 61. Wow. So uh, the old dog in me usually looks for the old dogs, but I'm not looking at the old dog this way, bud. I'm 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 flipping. 
I'm not the, I'm not the home dog guy this weekend. And you know I bet more home dogs in away favorites, yeah. but not this situation. This thing's too low, man. I, looking at the spread, man, it, it is Miami screaming at me. Now, they're coming off a bye. And yeah, yeah, I know they struggled against Virginia Tech at home and should have lost against Cal. Yeah. But this bye week should kick them in the butt a little bit. Yeah. You know, these guys are paid. These guys are high-profile players. They get paid a lot. Louisville has problems. And when they step up to bigger competition, they just fail. You know, I have Louisville 24 in my power range, but Miami's top seven in my power range. And I'm seeing a short spread under a touchdown in college football here. This is a stamp that Miami needs this week. You know, they need, yeah. I mean, look at all the haters out there saying stuff about them. They have to hear that all year. We can yeah. buy Louisville has um has played some competition but they failed they lost to Notre Dame by seven points when they should have won they lost to SMA SMU at home by seven. SMU dominated them at home that was at home that was yeah, in their it, house it, Louisville only ranks 54th in success rate according yeah. uh, from from their passing game Miami ranks fifth you know Louisville's biggest problem stopping the pass 67th in opponent pass EPA 74th in opponent QBR. And you don't think Cam Ward's going to go have a field day against them with all the yeah. studs he has on the offensive line, the receivers. Uh, this is just a great spot for Miami coming off the bye. Um, Tyler Shook, man, I've seen him play enough years in college football. I don't know how the hell he's still there. He's probably like um, almost my age. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, careless with the ball as well. He's careless. Um, yep. I have my, I have my, only, I have my eight points. It's a slam dunk road chalk. I'm laying the chalk minus four and a half. I hate laying chalk in a big game on the road in conference play, just because I've been doing this 33 years. Uh, I do know. I'll let you know a little secret. I have a friend that's a professional better out in Las Vegas. He has a five figure bet on this game. And it's it's on Miami. Okay, well there you yeah, go. Right out yeah. of the gate, right out of the gate, he told me, you know, he said this is going to be this. He said this should be at least six with a hook on it. Yeah, goes, it should it should be six and a half or seven points. I have eight, just in my he, uh, but he said, he said thank God for Cal and thank God for Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because yeah, thank God for them. It, it, it gave us it, it gave us some great value here yeah. in this game. So that's and, awesome. But uh, and, you know, Miami, they say, well, they're living off that 41-17 blowout over Florida to open up the year. And since then, they've been, you know, slightly above mediocrity and they, they let teams hang around. Their defense has given up big plays. True. Uh, but they're winning games. They're winning games. That's about it. They're finding ways to win these games. And and Louisville uh, is finding ways to lose games. You know, I mean, uh, I th Louisville had a hell of a lot better team last year than they did this year. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he went in there from Purdue and did a really good job. You know, the head coach went in that Brom went in there from Purdue and did a nice job last year. He inherited a lot of really good players. Uh, they haven't had much development. They haven't advanced. Matter of fact, they've, They've taken a step backwards, and um, that SMU game really raised my eyebrows. I mean, SMU went in there, and they throttled them. I mean, mm -hmm. SMU was the better team. They were the better team. Yes, I sir. mean, bar none. I mean, that just Louisville – I'm like, these guys are dog shit. I mean, they just – and Miami is a much better team than SMU. Yeah, and, it, it's... and they had a couple of – Maybe they were reading too many uh, headlines. Now, I've never been a big fan of Miami's head coach. You know, I, I think he's done some bonehead things over the years, especially during the games and in the games, managing the clock, just making stupid-ass calls, you know, going forward on fourth down when he didn't need to, and it changed the momentum of a game. And they ended up getting beat both here and at, at Oregon. But at, at the end of the day here, they got Cam Ward's the best player on the field. They're going to get it done off a of bye week. I, I, I'd i like to disagree with you and, and give you some shit on some of these picks, but we're just lined up, man. I just, I think that, you know, and I was looking at that thinking, boy, I was, 
when I first saw that line, I go, why isn't that a touchdown? Yeah. And then I, 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 I mean, it blows my mind too. Well, maybe yeah, this, I was talking maybe, to my buddy. He goes, yeah, I, I got, he goes, I got, he goes, I got, I got, uh, you know, tw 20 dimes on it. And I'm like, cool. what? So I, I immediately jumped on and put a little bit on him. So I, oh, nice, I got money nice. on him. I got to go with you, brother. All right. Well, let's talk about this game because you mentioned Alabama here. And this is the last one you picked. And maybe we'll quick touch on a couple others. But yeah. Alabama, Tennessee. And this is just interesting because Tennessee's got a few injuries. Alabama's looking bad lately. I'm really curious to see what you're going with this because Tennessee, I'm pretty sure there's still a home dog here. Of three, yep. three points, and three. the total is and the total is fifty six. So, yep. what do you think in this game, Tony? I think it's going to go under. I think okay. you got two pretty good defenses here. This will be the best defense Alabama's seen, or Tennessee seen. Um, and Tennessee's got a pretty good defense, a really good defense. My problem with Tennessee was uh, they lost their top tackler. You know, last week. Yeah, P. Uh, 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 Billy. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, Tennessee, you know, um, playing a team that had a twenty-seven, a twenty-to-seven lead. Remember this game last year? Bama was up twenty-to-seven at halftime. Ended up losing in overtime when they scored a hundred and one points between the two of them. That was in two that years ago, I think. Two right? years ago, yeah, that's the last time they played. We're not going to see a hundred and one points this 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 Saturday. No, you're not. You know, it's, it's and, uh, it, and, it, it, it's, these defenses are actually better than they've been in the past. So what I like to do come week eight of the season is I like to look at right here, right now. So it's it's the same thing I do once the NBA gets rolling. It's the same thing I do in college basketball. It's the same thing I do in day to day sports. But I start to do it in college football about this time of year. And what I mean by that is I don't look at season-long stats. I start looking at the last three games. And the last three games for Tennessee, 330 yards on offense and 20 points a game. That's not going to cut it against Alabama. It's not going to do it. And Melrose, better quarterback in the game. I'd, I'd lean Alabama. I think Alabama gets them. But I think it's going to be lower scoring. But I definitely would take Alabama minus the three here. I'm not sold on Tennessee. Um, at all, they've looked terrible. Um, I'm not sold on either team, and because, and, but so that's why I kind of really like what you're doing there with the under. I mean, 60, 56 yeah. and a half. They you had no points against there. Florida uh, in the first half last week, dude. They yeah, had zero they, points against Florida in the first half. Florida oh, is, is not all down. That. This is coming down too. It's uh, what I wrote 56 and a half, and it's 56. Um, yeah, this is okay. It's still fifty six and a half. At, and yeah, unders a play here. I'd I'd, I'd lean Bama, but I, un, unders my play. Yeah, unders not a terrible look at all in this game. Yeah. It's not that shootout that you're going to get because you don't no. have the offensive. It, well, you you think Kalen DeBoer's offense, but he's not really working so well for him in the SEC. And they, you kind of saw that the last yep. couple of weeks. You know. Yep. Um, yeah. It, it, this is. I, Tennessee's mind, got South the Carolina, better defense. Mind, South Carolina is good football team. They are. I mean, it, South, Carolina, it, if South Carolina had a quarterback. They they might just be a one loss team. Yeah, I, I'll lean to the under for sure, and I'm going to lean to Tennessee plus three because Tennessee does have the better defense, ranking fourth in EPA to Alabama, ranking 28th. But the whole uh, Keenan Pilly injury really sucks, and he was a yeah. right linebacker. A Mike linebacker is worth a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those weird games. Um, Lean to the under for sure. So let's go to a little hodgepodge here, Tony. We have to mention Texas, Georgia. I mean, yeah. Texas is up to five now. Here's what happened. I think I missed the three. I think, I think it just barely squeaked open at three, and it was three and a half. And I'm like, okay, they're going to get some contrarian money on Georgia. Nothing, nothing. And I'm looking at it the other day, yesterday, it's four. I'm like, geez, it's going the wrong way. I want to bet Texas. And then, you know, today I'm like, what, five, five and a half in some books. So, it, and that was a push by some sharper players. You know that. And I just retweeted um, a, 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 a sharp, an announcement on that sharp play. I have ten, I have Texas winning by margin. Not a ton of margin, but, you know, yeah. six, seven points I have them by. But now it just kind of went to the realm where it 
it's not even worth it for me to bet. Georgia knows they're an underdog. It's not often where you get Georgia as an underdog role. They're going to freaking bring it this week. They're going to yeah. bring everything they have this week. Texas coming off the Red River rivalry. A little bit too freaking easy of a game, man. But I'm going to probably just enjoy this one so I don't have to feel any sweats in right. it. I just want to see two games. You know, it's, it's sometimes you just kind of enjoy some games and not bet it. And that's fun. You know, sometimes I'll have my bet going and I won't watch the game. I'll watch the game that, uh, to learn more about the position teams for next week. You know, it's, uh, right. it, you know, it's, it, it's, and you enjoy college football that way. So, um, I, I'll leave that one alone. I, I think you kind of feel the same way. It sounds like, yeah, I do. You know, but it was scarcity as Ewers played like shit that first half at Oklahoma game. He still blew him out. I mean, they just got, they got talent. They got more talent than Georgia does. Right now, they, they actually do on defense too. Yeah, they yeah. do, and th- and that's why my numbers say it. But unfortunately, yeah. it went the wrong way. I mean, before the season, you could have got this amazing price, but uh, you know, it's just kind of the same you thing know. with BYU Oklahoma State. It's like before the season, if if it's in bus for candy and nuts, we'd all have a party. You know, it's just like you know, what can you do? Just enjoy college football. Yeah, the, the one thing too is I don't see Georgia doing anything different than they've done the last four or five years, and they've been dominant in college football. And sooner or later, these SEC teams, uh, they catch up to that. They're not mixing it up a whole lot. They're not doing a whole lot different than they've done, and everybody's kind of just figured them out a little bit. And it's, you know, it's just going to be like Kansas City and the NFL. Sooner or later, everybody's going to – they've kind of started to figure out what the the secret sauce is there until you mix it up and get a little bit more creative. You know, people are going to catch up to you and, and, uh, you know – I mean, that game against Kentucky, I mean, yeah, Kentucky's got a good defense. They shut down Ole Miss, and, you know, they they, they didn't score a touchdown against Kentucky, dude. I yeah. mean, that's – that's you're not going to – you're not going to beat Texas playing like that. You're Kirk, just not going to do it, man. Curse City Sports has a question. Wisconsin's getting plus 11 and a half against Penn State on FanDuel next week, 6.5. Everywhere else, Jesus, really? Um, college, I, in the NFL, I usually look ahead um, some, and sometimes I'll pick off someone because I know they're playing Monday night and they know which way the market's going to go. But that seems like a massive discrepancy. I'll just tell you what I have. Where's that game um, at? My numbers. Is that at? That, that's at? It's, been, it's, it's, in, it's in Wisconsin. A night, it's a night game. It's in, in Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Yeah, yeah. It's in Wisconsin. It's a night game in Wisconsin. Um, I don't have this as 11 and a half. I have Penn State minus around eight, around yep. eight points. Yeah. I, I don't have it 11 and a half. So that seems like a pretty good deal to me, uh, especially if Wisconsin takes care of Northwestern and Penn State's not even uh, – the Penn State's got the buy, so I guess they're factoring in, you know, bye week, blah, blah, blah. But it's a night game in Wisconsin. They're fired Wisconsin out. Wisconsin gets out of the Northwestern healthy, and you can get 11 and a half line at night at Camp yeah. Randall. Take it. I mean, yeah. I would. Don't you don't need to unload Grandma's bonds on it and sell the family farm and get rid of the Roth IRA? But you, you know, a little bit more than pizza money for sure. Yeah, I'm trying to find it on some of these places. I'll, I'll pull up my ad screen. Or in your and, case, uh, cheese curd and beer money. You know, whatever you call it up there. <laughs> Up, up there just, north of the border. <laughs> there's never there's never enough cheese curd and beer money. So that's that right. That's for sure. Um yeah, I'm gonna pull this up just to see which books have it real quick. So give me a sec here. Um so yeah, the score bet is six and a half. Yeah. Um uh Caesars is six and a half. ESPN bet is six and a half. Yeah, you probably grab it. Um it, it seems like a really good deal. I, I, thanks for letting me know because um, I'm probably going to hit it too, buddy. So, uh, so it looks like you just hit it as well. We can figure yeah. out what to do with it later. I mean, it would take a massive quarterback injury or something for Wisconsin for, for something like that to flip, you know. So good eyes, man. That's what we look yeah. for. Is, yeah. Oh, by the uh, way, what, what what is the cursed city? Cursed city sports. We're trying to figure it, out what. It, it, his, capital look like, his capital looks like Madison or, yeah. or, or, or Austin. Or is it Washington? Because yeah, I can make yeah, one of those. Know. I couldn't. I couldn't quite <laughs> see that. Yeah, I, I feel like we're the cursed city, really, in Madison. So, um, but you never know. 
may, uh, if you if you oh oh Harrisburg, P Pennsylvania. So you're Penn State guy, <laughs> okay? Oh, <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of he's, in, like he's MF and it's all over the place for going against the, yeah. The, no, no, know. he probably wants to fade Penn State. He's not going to be any whiteout up in Madison. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, he's probably frustrated like we are, my man. Well, yeah. you know, that's that's some of the bigger games. Um, I mean, what's funny about Vanderbilt this week, I just want to mention, is that they had they're in such a sandwich. They beat they beat uh Kentucky and then obviously Bama, right? And then yeah. now they have Ball State coming in. They're a massive favorite, 20 some points. Yeah, and then they it. have then they have someone like um on deck. I think it's like is it Georgia on deck? Hold, hold on, let me let me look at Vandy's schedule. Um, they have a massive sandwich going on here. I actually do a good good article this week on look aheads and all that. And I didn't release it yet. I'm about to after this show. But uh, Vanderbilt, could, oh Texas, they have Texas on deck. So it's like, do do they completely shit the bed here? There's no way I could bet Vanderbilt against. No, Ball State. I'd take Ball State. Yeah. I would take They're Ball State. 20, no. 25 and a half right now. Ball State's two and four. They're three and three against the spread. Uh, Ball State is he, – he, here's an interesting vein. Ball State is six and oh on overs, and Vandy is five and one on overs this year. FYI, and that total is 58 and a half. That's a pretty high total, but you, you, you better hope Ball State scores. That Kent, that, and that, that Kent State game last well, week, that was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen in my life. That was Scott Van Pelt's bad beat thing. They had a they had them by the short and curlies. They couldn't stop them at the end of the game, and it was Ball crazy. The last second. It's Ball on State my Twitter point. feed. Watch it on my – it's at T. George Sports. I copied that from Van Pelt, Stanford Steve, and put it on my Twitter feed, and they do the bad beat over that – that Ball State and Kent State game, it is funny as shit and sad at the same time because we've all been there. You know, when well, you've got it in the thing. bag. Here's the scary thing about Vanderbilt. They lost to Georgia State this year. Yeah. You know, they lost they, they, they lost to a bad Georgia State team. And so you know that the kids there are not high-talented kids. So if they screw up and have a letdown, Ball State can feel the momentum. Like any bad baseball team, you see it when they're kids. All of a sudden, they just start hitting the ball, and it just spins. All of a sudden, they're playing at the very high level. I mean, I, there's no, I was looking at Survivor this week. I can't use Vandy. I'm hoping Ball State wins. It's probably not going to happen. But I just can't use Vandy because yeah. I'd be so pissed at myself if they lost in the sandwich spot this big between Kentucky and Texas. You know, it's just – it, and you also you all you also got to think about this. Say they are blowing them up 35 to 7, third quarter. You got Texas on deck. That coach, he's trying to make some noise down there in Vandy. He's made some noise. He should have beat Missouri. I watched that whole game. I was in Kansas City, my local watering hole. The Nebraska game was coming on after that. So I went down there and suffered through that game with my Missouri buddies who hate Nebraska. I sat there and I was having fun. Because Vandy was putting it to them, they should have beat them in that game. But they and they beat and then they end up beating Alabama. They're looking at a, a halfway decent bowl game if they can make some noise here this year. So he, if he's got a big lead, he wants to pull his starters out and keep them healthy too. That's got backdoor cover written all over it. If in fact it goes that way, absolutely it does. I uh, yeah, no di no disagreement here. Well, let's go to beer bet bet or <laughs> beer banger bets, man. Um, what do you want to put some beer money on here, Tony, for the whatever you want? It could be anything, college basketball, football, or whatever you think. NFL, don't matter. Well, we're going to go ahead with a couple. I'm, I'm going to – I've been hot in the NFL, and uh, and I had a couple here circled, and I don't have I, – I forgot to pull up my Word doc here for you. Um, one of them I'm going to put some money on is, is uh, in the NFL's Denver laying some points on the road. New Orleans is banged up. That's going to be a little bit of money. Everybody's thinking, why is Denver favored on the road with a rookie quarterback? Well, they're playing a rookie quarterback. And here's another one. And this is a little bit of a long shot. This is going to raise some eyebrows. The Cleveland Browns on the money line plus 240. I, I like it. it. 
Oh, and by the way, I, yeah, I know. I know Armari Cooper now is a Buffalo Bill. Give me the Browns on the money line. I agree. And, and I, sprinkled, I, I took the bet and I sprinkled the money line. So yep, a little, take the little, fix. little look ahead for tomorrow. And you better put and you, and you better uh you better put them in a teaser. If you do teasers, add get them to plus twelve. They always give Cincy games. And what's Cincinnati doing with two wins? Laying six on the road. And by the and the other thing too is remember this in the NFL, home divisional dogs, especially home divisional dogs of over three points. <laughs> you always gotta take a look at them, dude. Yeah, you certainly do. Uh, man, BYU is a good look, like you mentioned before, but I already planned on a one that's not going to cash until March. And I'm looking at Rutgers to win the Big Ten regular season in basketball. Here's the thing. They have the top two of what? recruits. Look, did you see the recruits on 24-7 this year? I know. They have know, Ace Bailey got- and Dylan yeah. Harper. Two yeah. studs that they pulled. Duke's got one and four. They have two and three. Yeah. You know. Now here's the thing. It's probably oh, it's thirteen to one. But look at Zach Eady finally away from the Big Ten. Zach Eady's gone. You know, so that helps you a little bit. Yeah. And you go say, oh, they lost Mawat Mag. They lost Cliff Omiyuri. They sucked last year. They couldn't put it together last year. Now they got some transfers coming in. They're going to be a young team. But maybe the Big Ten can beat it. It, it. Remember two years ago when, like, the tenth place was only two games away from the second place. You know, uh, in the Big Ten, I, I, I'm taking them thirteen to one to big win the Big Ten regular season, and it's just a beer bet, man. This is not a premium play right now. I need to see way more, and I'm starting my college basketball prep, but I couldn't let this one go without putting some beer money on it, Tony. Yeah, and I'll tell you one I put some on too uh, when the NHL season started. I put uh, I bet the New York Rangers to win the Stanley Cup at plus fourteen hundred. I just looked there at plus thirteen hundred now. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the Rangers this year to win the Stanley Cup. They they brought everybody back. They almost got there last year. Their entire team is still together. They got a very good net tender. Uh, you know, just uh, like I said, beer money. You know, but I, I went ahead and did it. You know, right, no, I love it. That great, great stuff. That's that's the kind of stuff we want to hear at the odds breakers. But Tony, we are out of time, my man. You've been great as usual. Where could our listeners and our viewers get your wonderful plays and information? Well, you get over at docsports.com. We're killing it in the NFL props right now. Uh, we're on a 14 and 5 run. Uh, we swept last Sunday. A lot of people did good last. Matter of fact, John Q. Public did good last Sunday against the books of the NFL. And this weekend, I have one of these a year. Some years I don't have one, but I do have my college football game of the year this weekend. And that'll All be right. out Thursday over at DocSports.com on a four-pack. And then uh, I think weekend packages are like $89 or something. You get all college and all pro picks. And then we'll have a uh, a top play in the NFL rolling along. And uh, before we got out of here, real quick, I wanted to ask you, um, of course, DocSports.com. And all of our picks come with a profit guarantee. So if you don't win, if you don't turn a profit, you know, we'll get you back your units. Um, just go to the website and read it, DocSports.com. YouTube, daily free pick videos over at YouTube. Just type in DocSports. My, my shows are there. I give out a lot of free picks on there every day. I'm just going to ask you one question, Kev. What do you think about my Chiefs this weekend? <laughs> Revenge spot for the Niners. This this week means nothing to them. Now, I would hate fading Andy Reid off the bye, but the Niners yeah. are also off at extra time. I like the Chiefs. They, you know, If the Chiefs were the short – if the teams were even with the short team in the playoffs, you bet them to win it because why wouldn't you? But um, I just think this is a spot for the Niners. But um, it's not. It would. Be, it's nothing like you'd say. Put your pension on or nothing. This is a. No, no. It, it, this is just like a pick for me. I, I'll pick the Niners. What's up, Sniper West? We, we a, bu- a buddy of me and Tony's chiming in. So what's up, buddy? Oh, um, man. So yeah, man. I I feel I feel it's a Niners spot. Do you feel different? 
Uh, I it's no big deal to Kansas City if they lose, but then again, on the other side of the coin, they'll probably play loose. But Kansas City hadn't played a foot a good football game all year long, and they're missing their top wide receiver, and their top running back, and somehow they're still winning. It's going to catch up with them sooner or later. If it catches up with them here, it's not the end of the world. I, you know, I, I think the Niners are. You know, I'm, I'm not. Everybody's real fired up. They look so good against Seattle. Jesus, folks, it's Seattle. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's Seattle. All right, yeah. we, well, I, we I have, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna watch it with my wife and let her throw a fit when Kansas City gets beat. Make sure you guys check out Tony at Doc Sports. He's a who. We'll talk soon, Tony. Hey, thanks.